as David Chan commented day before yesterday, that one creditable thing is that you have come to China. And the second creditable thing is you have found this room 505A and B. It, it, it further shows the interest you have in gaining clinical skills and knowledge. Uh, and he very well said that if you can find this room 505A and B, I assure you, you will be able to implant secondary IE wealth with confidence. So the introduction of this course is, this is a kind of solo flight. There is uh, no co-pilot on my right and left but a brother from Indonesia and these two brothers from Pakistan and a sister all of you are my co-pilots so my participants will interact and share and will guide me through and will correct me wherever I am wrong so I am inviting myself Dr. Zeyal Mazari to the lecture to proceed with the instruction course in Wapta Hospital Complex, Lahore, Pakistan, affiliated with Central Park Medical College, Lahore, Pakistan. And I am working there on the seat of Assistant Professor. And the course is secondary ECI oil implantation made simple. So for the sake of discussion, I have divided it into three parts. Part 1 background and classification, part 2 clinical and surgical skills and part 3 will be the review and uh, we will interact with each other. So general issues in learning and teaching are learning without thought is labor lost and thought without learning is intellectual death. It is the saying of Confucius, the famous philosopher of China. So let's be clear of, about our objectives, what we are going to gain out of this course and what is the objective from speaker's perspective and from the participant's perspective. So to demonstrate the safe and effective use of techniques for secondary PC level implantation while avoiding the pitfalls and to explore the alternatives of scleral fixation of PC level in eyes with partial or total absence of posterior capsule and to classify indications and to discuss surgical planning for secondary PCI implantation. As I was going through the literature, there is, you know, immense literature and knowledge about everything is here today, but in more literature I could not find a kind of systematic classification which covers all aspects of secondary PCI implantation. So in this course, I am going to attempt to classify it in a sequential and a clinical related manner to elaborate variation of surgical procedure required to manage different situations encountered in secondary PCI implantation. And we will go from simple to more complex situation. So upon the completion of this course, I expect my participants to be able to plan a surgical intervention when faced with unilocular or binocular aphakia needing a secondary PCI implant classify and describe the different clinical presentations and appropriate surgical technique for secondary PCI implantation, identify and manage the most frequent intraoperative and postoperative complications encountered in secondary PCI implantation. Synopsis of this course is that secondary PCI implantation in effects is an established procedure. Variation of surgical procedures are required to manage different situations. The status of posterior capsule varies from fully intact or totally absent. Similarly, the technique needs to be varied accordingly and that's what we are going to try to cover in this course. The overview is, we have already discussed objectives, synopsis we have discussed, there will be a little background and then I will discuss the classification criteria and the classification and we will be considering pre-op considerations, intraoperative considerations, post-op follow-up, the surgical technique and then we will be reviewing it, there will be little kind of MCQs in the end 
and uh, then we will have a question and answer session and then I will summarize the course. So with this evening scene, we move to our part one of this instruction course. The first presentation is about the background and classification. An evolution of cataract surgery, you all know it started from our part of the world in India centuries ago and then went to Europe and then came back to us as all other techniques. And this is how it has evoluted, evoluted over time from coaching and simple procedures to multifocal IULs. And here is the man who changed this scenario, the inventor of IUL, Mr. Sir Harold Ridley. And this, this I am a great fan of Mr. Sir Harold Ridley. So he was born, he did this procedure on November 29, 1949 and got this idea of IUL from shattering of the wind screens of the fighter jets in World War II. And those pieces he found in the eyes of the pilot and were not reactive. And then he started working with Mr. John Wright to create an IUL. And interestingly, the first IUL procedure with a PC rent and 2 to 10 percent risk of posterior capsular rent in good hands have been reported in literature. So these are the situations which demand that we need to know about secondary IOL, PCR implantation to be a good VN without any risk of complications and with safety to our patients. So FATR can be classified, this is very basic thing, but this is how we are going to proceed. FATR with full capsular support, these are the two major groups on which we are going to base our discussions and FATR with partial or absent capsular support. And if this FATR may be further complicated by dislocated or subluxated nuclear fragments or pseudofibus itself. So options for correcting FATR, you know very well. We have already discussed angle supported IULs, iris supported IULs, scleral supported IULs, capsule supported IULs and the other techniques like epigrat of FATR. And we are going to make all others in this section and we may go in detail in question answer session but I am going to basically concentrate on posterior chamber IULs in circus or in capsule. So if it is with full capsule support, what are the considerations? If you need to have a look on the pupil, whether it is mobile or fixed, regular, irregular, constricted or dilated because of sinecki. Iris tissue, whether it's fully intact or it's missing because of the previous surgery or trauma. Sinecki, anterior, posterior. The visual axis, whether it's clear or opaque. That was about effective with full capsular support, with intact capsule. But if the capsule is partial or absent, all the in consideration in the previous slide plus further considerations posterior capsule if it is deficient whether the range is central round range or a central linear range or, or it is a peripheral range and if it is whether it is totally absent anterior vitreous whether it is prolapsed in the anterior chamber or stitched in the wound by the previous surgeon or the previous surgery or it is already vitrectomized. So these are the things which we need to know when we are planning for a secondary PCIO implantation. So further complication as we discussed the FATR may be further complicated by subluxated or dislocated pseudofecos. We have to find it out by clinical examination and with, with the help of necessary investigations. And dispersed cortical matter and other complicated scenarios. So with this background, I have divided this into five or six groups. Simple secondary PCIOL implantation. This is the term we are going to use, secondary PCIOL. The capsule is intact, round reactive pupil and 
The procedure is very simple. Place an incision and implant an IUR. So, but if there are sinicky, the pupil is not round. So what you need is to perform a visual aridectomy or just tease these iris away from the capsule, redesect the sulcus and implant your PCI well. That is sulcus dissection, sinicky lysis and PCI well implantation. And in the third situation, there is a central round rent in the capsule. So you can go perform a core vitrectomy through the rent. Make sure the iris is free, there are no sinicky and implant a posterior chamber IUL. That is intra-shelf PCIUL implantation, IS PCIUL with combined with anterior vitrectomy and the leaf. So as we were discussing, if if the there is peripheral bend and is extending for less than 80 degrees, here I have you know kind of how will you decide whether your remaining capsule is able to support one of your iron haptics or not? Is whether it reaches your haptic optic junction or not? And how can you assess it preoperatively by fully dilated exam if you are able to find that the remaining capsule, intact capsule is more than 180 degrees intact and the rented capsule is less than 180 degrees. That means your capsule will be able to support the one haptic of the IUL and in those, those situations we will classify it as single haptic succlinal fixation of PCIUL, SHSF PCIUL. Where the the capsule is totally absent. The answer is very simple. Double haptic scleral fixation of PCIUL, DHSF PCIUL. And if the FAK is further complicated by dislocated pseudofecos or nuclear fragments or the nucleus itself is dislocated, of course it will be combined with double haptic or single haptic scleral fixation will be combined with some other procedure like PBV retrieval and fixation of the same lens or IUL exchange. So with this we come to end with our part 1 of the course that was background and classification. And are you with me to this point? The classification criteria and the groups we have made whether the capsule is intact, the rent is central or peripheral, the extent of the rent, the status of the vitreous, whether we need single haptic fixation or double haptic fixation. In this way, whenever we face this, whenever we treat an affected patient, we will be able to put it in a certain category and we will go to operation room with a very clear-minded plan. 